<laughs> what was that intro? Yeah. Bunch of mimes. Yeah. It's That's super freaky. Language independence, man. Uh, all Come right. Come on, man. That's like a softball. All right. Were they driving good. a car? We haven't seen it. That's what made us laugh. Did you like laugh. it? Yes. Okay, it's my idea then. <laughs> It was Roy's idea. I gotta give it All to right. give him the wow. prize. Well, then it was That's amazing. How we do it. Stolen, <laughs> straight stolen. Hey, folks. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. Sam Healy. Welcome back. Today we're talking about our top ten language independent games, and I thought this was funny because someone online or was in Facebook or in the in the Board Game Geek Guild they were like, "Isn't this just your top ten games? You know, this would be a really easy list to put together." Mm. But I don't think I have a single game in my... I don't. I know I don't. I don't have a single game in my top ten that fits this list. Because yeah, so many of my games are text-heavy games. Or at least there's some text in them. Or oh, you need to communicate. So... I'll talk about that in a bit. All right, yeah, well, we talked the, about it. Okay, well, I, I wasn't part of the conversation. So this is what I did. I picked games that had, as far as I know, no writing on the game at all. And... Uh, no cheating where there's a card that you need to look up every single turn, which is the same thing. Like, for example, the one where I just missed Thea, which I really like. Technically language independent, but on my word, it's not. Right. Uh, okay. The thing about communication, though, that I did not do, which will be very clear on the view of mine. Yeah, that's fine. Well, what I did, Sam was talking to me about this, and basically what I told him, what we started talking about was, my list, I'm basing it on what it would be like to play a game in which, in which I have to mix two groups of people that speak two different languages and can't really talk to each other. Now, I could teach those two groups of people if it's in Spanish and in English, but they can't really talk to each other, and they have to have their own ability to play the game without really being a communication-driven game. I really went to the extreme with the language independent, which really is why it kind of pushes outside of me just looking at my top 100 and being like, oh, language independent, that's in, language independent, that's in. I didn't really do that. I started from that point, and then I had to find other things. All right, well, yeah. eight of my ten meet that qualification that's pretty also. Good. I kind of, we kind of, I guess we kind of gloss over, well, you didn't, but because you have the ability to explain rules in two different languages. Right. I don't, so I kind of took it as a... Big pay at and lay. Well... No, and that that neither. Real I, that's no, I didn't even cling on. Time to do that. Cling on. Um, Get your decrypted deck. I kind of just took it as a given that you're going to have to explain the rules. Mm -hmm. You have to. You can't. I don't know. I don't think there's a game out there where you can just know Take how to play the game. I'm like X. Yeah, but then they put still then, then they start doing it. You're like. So oh my their, goodness! Slap their hand like. <laughs> I don't really stop. This is <laughs> that's not this is sad. anyway. You Scary get what I'm saying, bit. right? I can um, teach a game without knowing your language. Every yeah. time you do something wrong, I, I give you a shock, <laughs> a little taser. <laughs> You'll play pretty quickly. Mm. This is okay. terrifying. It is insight um, into Tom Vassell's inner workings. I'm just saying that's how you could do it. And I'm saying you might want to seek professional help. <laughs> it's too late. All right. Ooh. Anyway, uh, I've also arranged mine, I might as well say it now, from the heaviest game, meaning the one that would probably require people to sort of communicate the least, I'm using communicating quotes there, to the lightest game. I was trying to figure out, is there a party game I can wow. put on this list? That's actually what I did. Really? Yeah, I did it the one oh, that's most You did complex. it wrong if you're copying Sam. <laughs> that hurts. I did it from uh, what I would consider the most complex to the least complex. Yeah. And I did that. Well, your most complex is one or ten? Ten. Yeah, okay. We did the same thing. Yeah, because I wanted my top, you know, two or three to be basically You're party wrong, games. Colonel Sanders. You could have made it. We could. You could make it, in this, and since someone just mentioned it live, but it's possible. You could make a top ten abstract strategy games because they're always language independent. You yes. can always teach those. Another thing I did, no two-player games. Hang on, no, you did, I didn't know all these rules. Mm. I'm still in. I mean, no two-player only games. Still in. Because I can play that with there's a, a single other person. There's one two-player only game. There's on no list. need to for the game to adapt to a group that has multiple languages. Uh. Again, I know I put in these caveats on my own, but I'm hoping to make it useful to someone out there who is in that situation. You could like, oh, my mother-in-law only speaks Cantonese. 
but you know my uh, wife speaks English and you know and I need to be able to teach both and play together whatever you get what I'm saying you could pretend like you don't speak Spanish right well, and, and then have another person that does speak Spanish and teach them how to play the game in broken Spanish like just for laugh sure we should get started because I'm actually not understanding this conversation anymore uh, okay let's do that me no piggy piggy <laughs> let's go Number 10. All right, my number 10 is a game that actually, <laughs> yeah, I guess I have to do this every time. I don't know what it is. It actually requires a smidgen of language. I'm not going to criticize you if you're using... Communicating. Yes. It's oh, not fine. on that's the game, fine. though. Yeah, that's okay. That's it's not, not that's on the only game. Once, I think I've been looser thing. than you, so oh. i got to be cautious <laughs> yeah, here. I don't care. We can't pick on you for that. That was my own thing. And the reason I included it on the list is because I have actually used this in a group of people who did not speak the same language and were on various levels. Got it. Codename Pictures. Codename Pictures. There's already been six people who said that should be on the list. There you go. All right, Codename it's Pictures. Like you were reading um, the comments. Now, you do have to communicate, and there has to be oh, a level change. of communication that's there uh, because the clue giver has to give the clues. All right, so there is some language dependence mm. in the game, but on the actual components, not at that. Tentaculos. Um, so I really think this is this is my first of all this is my favorite way to play code names. Silently. Uh, <laughs> no, not si Although. Wait. I think there's more silence in regular code names than there is in this. Yeah, probably. But how about mime? This is what mime I mime names. That's how I play. Mime Weird. names. Code names with only miming. No, what I do is if I'm the clue giver and I mime it, I go. And then they pick which two. <laughs> yeah, you just mine your chip. Yeah. You win a lot, I bet. That's really easy. Yeah. It makes the game really a lot more straightforward. I'm sure. I'm sure. But uh, Codenames Pictures, it might have more, a little bit more communication than regular Codenames because there's, there's more talk, I guess, going on. But um, I really think that this is a great game for language-independent groups uh, because it just works well. Um, a lot better, I think, than the the word counterparts that are out there. So that's my number 10, Codenames Pictures. Cool. That's a good pick. Uh, my number 10 pick is uh, one of Sam's favorite games of all time. Yes, it is. Five Tribes. Um, I thought it was actually being Wait, isn't there, isn't there text on the uh, gin cards? Nope. It's all icons. Yeah. Got to look it up, though. They're all different. Sure, but I can explain to people what they are and whatever language they need it's once good or twice. It's iconography is what he's saying. It's once or twice. You know Got what it. I mean? I'm like, oh, with that one, yeah, put the camel there and push it, whatever. Yeah. Like Intuitive. Yeah, it's it, it'll work out. Again, this is my 10 because it is likely the most challenging to do this with. But everything is language independent. You can explain everything in the game. Everyone can bid on their own turn. You can take your turns. You can really play this without speaking. Yeah. There's no trading between the players or anything like that. You can do your own thing. Um, so I think if you're looking for a game that you want to play with a mixed language group and you need something with a that's punchy, something with a lot going on, this is this is your huckleberry, I think, as Sam Hila likes to say, and also Sam will definitely play this with you. He learns it. I I would play it, but I don't learn it. <laughs> He's a lerv. My number ten, five tribes. My number ten has been on my mind recently because I've just played it a I few weeks a ago, solitaire game. and I played it. Like yesterday, was it no two days ago, but mixing it with the newest version, oh. and that is Century Spice Road, or the one I put on here, Century Golem Edition, same thing. No. Um, this there's really no language in it. It's basically grab cubes, change cubes, and other cubes, turn those cubes in to get the golems or to get the spice routes or whatever it is. This is a great. This is a great a uh, example of how theme. And production quality can make a game more interesting. Period. Like you would play this five times over the other one. Yeah. Five tribes over the other one. <laughs> <laughs> no, because then it would sit for a while and go. Simply and because of simply because like, of oh, theme there's a better production move. quality. Simply. Okay, just but those two things. But be that as it may. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Century Spice Road is still 
It just, a good game. Yeah. These same games thing. work really well. And I can, it's, just pretty. it's one of those games that I I don't know. We'll have to wait till we do gateway games again. But this may even surpass Ticket to Ride at the rate I use to teach new people at this point. Disgust. I mean, it's dun, just dun, such an dun. easy game to teach people. And it, and it looks more complex. And, and, and people feel like they have these really cool choices in it. And there's sure. literally the you only... Can, you don't have to explain anything on these cards. You don't have to speak during this game. That is also true. You don't true. have to say a word during this whole game right. outside of teaching rules. Someone else knows how to play. They could speak anything they want to, and you can sit down and play this game. Yeah. I'm going to do that next time I play. So, Sentry, either Gold Edition or Spice Road, my number 10. You, a beast. Good choice. Say shows. a word. Good. Number 9. My number 9. Numero. What is? I don't know. Numero nine. Yeah, go. <laughs> Numero nine. Numero nine. <laughs> nine. Numero nine. Um. <laughs> Jamaica. Jamaica, me crazy is. Wait, was there no build up there? I'm super confused. What? There was no build up. No, there isn't. Uh, Jamaica needs. There no is. No introduction to Sam's top tens. Uh, that's true, um, because it's a great game. And there is absolutely no language dependence at all on any part of this game. Mm -hmm. It's all icons. It's all uh, iconography, whatever, uh, on all of the cards. Mm -hmm. No language whatsoever. You simply have to teach it, show what the different special cards do, and then you're off to the races. Is it Literally. still that way with the expansion? I can't remember. Sure. Yeah. There's no <coughs> words on my no, crew members. symbols on all the little crew people. So but you guys hate that expansion anyway. No, no don't he likes it. There. I, don't I don't like it. You like it. You yeah. hate it. <laughs> you Is it, it okay to go, I don't like something without it turning into hate? No. You have to like something, like love it or hate it. You dive in. Both feet. Got it. You hate it. Then I hate it. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I <right. guess. laughs> Yeah, I'm just saying, make a choice. Make it is, a, it is choice. a great game, though. It's sim you're simply racing around the island of Jamaica. Uh, you're all pirates. You're all oh, trying to take out uh, everybody. Jamaica. Never got that before. Such a troll, man. That's my number nine troll. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's a great game. You do not need any language dependency at all in this game, Jamaica. Number nine. Great game. Almost made my list. <laughs> Except for the talky talky when you're fighting stuff. Yeah, but you don't even need to. Uh, you don't have to do that. I'm I mean, so nervous about my number as, nine now. That's just uh, me again. Codename pictures, but I mean, yeah. I mean, you will still enjoy I'm the sorry. game. Is it more fun? If you can talk and communicate, sure. Any right. game. Every like that game way. is more yeah, fun when you talk like and that. communicate. That's what I'm saying. But you can still uh, enjoy this game it's be and some not game communicate. That's not. Okay, uh, except for a game that obviously forbids talking <laughs> yeah, right, and communicating. Right. All right, fine. My number nine. Well, we're on a roll here, Sam, because my 10 was a Bruno Catala design. Mm -hmm. Your nine. Bruno Catala co-design. Yes. And my nine is a Bruno Catala game as well. Well, the rest of your games are probably going to be Bruno Catala. Yeah, no, well, how is this a big surprise? Except for five, the rest of them are. <laughs> no, my number nine is Micropolis. My Your what? Micropolis. My Cropolis. Cropolis is my number nine Opolis. Got it. Yes. Nine Opolis. <laughs> number nine would also be a good pick for this list, actually. That stacking number game. But anyway, this is not that. Someone, really someone just said that in the comments, too. No, but yeah, that nine. is a good... Yeah, this one has a bunch of little symbols on the, the ants that you need to explain. But other than that, it's a tile drafting game in which you're building your own little ant hill there. Yep. And then, you, you know, you're manipulating where you put your little ant soldiers, scoring victory points, creating these uh, paths throughout the ant hill. Trying to win. That's it. It's a good, different game. That's another thing I tried to do with the list is sort of highlight different feels. Yeah. Like, so this is a tile drafting game. There's going to be some games later on which are simultaneous game, you know, that so, so there's no need for that sort of communication. But this one, if you want a little bit of that turn angst, like, ooh, I want that tile, but it's not my turn yet. Don't take that tile, you know. Some, you know, and so you're hoping people will skip it so you can grab it on your own turn, that sort of thing. It, it, this is a good one for that. Uh, but definitely lighter than something like Five Tribes. So Micropolis, my number nine pick, I think it'll work well. Cool. Thank you, Jerry. Um, okay, so I didn't know about the no communication rule. That is not a thing. That's okay. just me. 
So I came into this from the aspect that I taught in Korea, and so I would bring games to the table, and some things were confusing. But this sure. one I could use with both the people learning English yeah. and with people who are good at English, which is yeah. why. So my number nine is barely a game anyway, yeah. and that's concept. But it's about communication. You messed up. I... <laughs> <laughs> no, but concept has no words in it. It's all pictures and everything. And the point this is, is basically to get someone to guess a word using pictures. Sure, right. So the the idea of this is I can say, hey, people who don't know English very well, here's a game, and they go off and play it by themselves. They don't need to look at any reason. They just look at the, the board. Because right. the concepts of happiness and unhappiness are universal. <laughs> the concepts are bigger and smaller. This is almost the exact opposite of Codenames Pictures. It's, it's like flipped. In Codenames Pictures, you're using a word to get them to guess a, a couple of pictures. And this one, you're using pictures to get them to guess a word. Sure. And if I, right, I right, like this true. better than pictures, which is why I made my list. But I could see putting Codename Pictures on the list. Yeah. Um, hmm. So that's my number that's nine concept. Also, welcome Tim Ferguson. He's a new member of the YouTube. That's cool. I think that means they donate new to us. New subscriber? Yeah, new subscriber. Sweet. Cool. Oh. Alright, let's jump to number eight. Number eight. Blah, 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 blah. My number eight is a, a tile drafting game, is but they are actual problems? pieces. Little bake light squares that look like Starburst cubes. Azul stained glass of Sintra. So what happened with this one? You think I still see people playing Azul at the game meetups, but I'm not seeing this one being played. But this one, I think, is clearly more fun. I think that's objectively like, more fun. Well, I no, believe is I the proper word. I like this one much better than the original, uh, and I don't know exactly why. I think it's prettier than the original. Um, but Crazy uh, this one just uh, looks much better, and I like, I mean, it's still the same mechanisms, it yeah? It is largely, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I guess it's just because it's I, slightly I think meaner, it looks though, better. I think. The first one was first. That's the difference. Yeah. And that it really does go splash, along. That right? goes a long way towards keeping something splash. in the limelight. But uh, this is a great game. You could literally play, we were talking about this earlier, you could literally play this in silence. I often do. I don't want to talk to people when I'm playing this because I'm about to wreck their house. About to wreck your entire strategy. I don't, I don't need to be look conversing you with you and be like, hey, by the way, how you doing? How was last week? And your turn to draft. <laughs> That's right. You better take those 16 orange tiles. Well, let me tell you about my weekend in short words. <laughs> Four-letter words? I don't you? No. Yes, no. you do. Don't do it. Only in here. Oh, there's a lot of four-letter words that aren't curse words. You realize that, right? Yes. I use four-letter words all the time. So do I. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I, I usually use more number eight. Bigger words that are in the dictionary for adults. Azul stained glass. Azul is a four-letter word. So, yeah, so are the rest of the Plan B titles, right? <laughs> Didn't they say that was going to be a thing? They're going to change. When someone says four-letter word, I'll be like, ooh, Plan B. <laughs> Yeah. What's the name of that line called? Next move. That's Next, right. Next move. move. Yeah. All right. My number eight game is one that Tom really likes, much like Sam likes Five Tribes. Anyway, mm -hmm. this is called Solenia, and Solenia. Oh. Is <laughs> Didn't you? Don't you call this Solamia? Solamia. Yeah, that's Solamia. Good. I think that's, that's what you good. did. No. If you came that's up a with terrible that, terrible pun. No, that's I'm a pretty good sure pun. you did. No. That's a four-letter pun. <laughs> That's a good pun. So uh, lame. Josiah says Onitama, but we we said we weren't putting abstracts, two-player abstracts. That's really, that would be so easy. I would be, you know, I, I could do that in a second. I'm trying to get games with a little more going on. Anyway, so Lenia is of the resource management type of game. And those are kind of hard to do sometimes in a language-independent game. Or you're going to end up with a game that has so much iconography that it's going to bog down the whole thing anyway. Right. Whether you're playing in English or Spanish or it doesn't matter, you know. This one has a little bit of iconography. It's a fairly light family weight game. You're going to have some of that, you know, if you want to play something with a mixed language group and you want to do that whole, oh, I'm going to grab two stone, one wheat, turn that in, you know, claim something, that kind of feel, this is a good one for that. It is light. It's a pretty light game. Family weight. 
It is short. You have a deck of 12, 14 cards. You play them each, and that's your turn, and you run your little deck out. That's the whole game. But it still manages to feel engaging and do a good amount with small trappings, with a simple concept at its core. So that's why I thought this was a good one. Um, so Lenia, my number eight pick. All right, I got a lot of garbage in the comments for my pick of concept, not because of the, really? the choice, because, as they pointed out, all the cards in the game are in English, which is true. All the words you're trying to get people to say are in English. Oh, no English words in the game. That's what you meant by language independent. Got it. I think he's trolling them, not you. Anyhow, but my number so you, you A, which up. is my other one in this category, has no words at all. So what's your real eight then? This is your real eight then. No, this is my eight. Okay, what's your real nine? Because clearly you uh, messed up. I'll pick uh, Through the Desert. Done. Good, yeah, good choice. Through Desert has no... Yeah, Through Desert works. Yeah. Anyway, sure. that was on my short list. Number eight is Dixit. I don't actually care. Because Dixit has all the pictures and everything, and there's no words. You're just saying whatever you want as you put a card out. You think there's too much communication in Dixit? Well, I think it... You can Why would you play a game that is language independent? No, to me, the game is language independent because I can give it to anybody regardless of their language and they can play it. Okay, okay, I'll buy that. And that's kind of where I'm at in this point in time. Hey, you can play Dixit. Oh, you want a copy? You get it. You can go play your family. You got Greek? Go play it in Greek. And you can. You literally don't have to. There's, there's only one version of Dixit. Okay. There's no. Sure, I'll buy that. Except for obviously the rules. You know, but other than the rules, and if we do that, then every game no, doesn't nothing, work. No, nothing, nothing works. But Dixit, even if someone, I, I played Dixit with people who speak, who have spoken, sp like me. Yeah, people <laughs> who can't speak. Like you. Example of what you're saying to me. You got it. You just explained it. You didn't have to illustrate it. That's Inception right there. God, what? Anyway, I played this with people who speak poorly. Other languages. Or poorly. Nah. Just less English than myself, which apparently Fewer English. Is, That's a lot. That's saying a lot. Very few people. Fewer English. <laughs> Anywho, and it works okay because the clues can be very simple, like yellow Caca. or happiness. Caca. Caca. Oh, I'm sorry I brought this up. Okay, this I'm, I'm back to whatever. This was whatever an easy the, list for you to make, apparently. I'm, I'm, he has our problem to communicate with everybody. I'm done. You need to stop <laughs> speed reading and sound the words out in your head. You know what? All joking aside, that is one of the, the disadvantages of speed reading. I know It's because you, you kind of skip over the name. It's like name starts with a D. Sure, I know that guy. I never actually sounded out in my head. You don't read the stuff. It, quote, unquote, read it. Yeah, you're sort of consuming it. I All right. A, I have a problem. You're okay, buddy. Uh, we'll take care of my, it. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm done with party games. Everything else here is fairly normal. Eight, dicks it. All right. Number seven. All right, my number seven. Do it. Is from a company that you guys have been, like, waiting for me to say one of their games on a lot of my time. Emperor S4. Yes, that's true. But this is like the first time it's been on there it's and forever. It's, it's on your desk, so I'm not going to say what it is. That's true. It yeah. is. Yeah. Because that actually, I was having a really hard time, and I was like, oh, yeah, that works. Realm of Sand. Realm of Sand is a very language independent game. I don't think I played this one. Um, you probably haven't because that's a you, really pretty cover. You, you see Emperor S4 and then you automatically hand it to me, which I appreciate. But you're going over, you're, you're glossing over a lot of good games because of it. Speed anyway, rate. if you go to the next slide, it has all of these different castles that you are literally building. It actually started with a sand castle theme, but they changed it a little bit and gave it that little mystical flair to it of you're going into another realm and creating all of these different castles. But good. you're simply arranging these different kinds of tiles on your player board, which is right there on the uh, left-hand side. And uh, once you get all of the different colored squares configured to one of the, uh, what is that, 12 uh, required board, you can take that card and it scores you points at the end of the game. Hmm. Uh, and uh, once you take, uh, once you score a card, you gotta uh, take one of the things from the circle, of one of the different shapes from the circle, and then move uh, the the um, I don't know what that guy is called, the little magician dude or whatever he is, the meeple there, uh, to the next. Oh, the block block. Yeah. So anyway, 
it's a really fun game, and you don't need any language at all. Looks cool. It's, it does uh, look it's good. Really good game. So that's my number seven, Realm of Sand. Huh. Interesting. All right, my number seven. <laughs> you gave me whatever you had. Don't mock me. It's it is catchy now. <clears throat> no, Nathan, my number seven is, like, right is, uh, <laughs> is a game called Sentient from Renegade Game Studios. It uh, seems ironically named for a. Sentient? Language independent game. Well, sentient means having that awareness. It just means language. being like I'm alive. You know what I mean? I don't think people who don't speak my language aren't alive. No, sentient means more than just being alive. Yeah, because it means dogs aren't having having the ability. Dogs to communicate. aren't sentient. No, having the ability to communicate. I think a plant is a sentient being, isn't it? I'm looking it up. Go ahead and tell people no. why you like it. Nope. Has has to do with thinking. I'm almost positive. Okay, well, let's They'll find out, and then, and then we can do a little bit the more you know right here. Google. A sentient means responsive to or conscious of sense impressions. There you go. Ah, but that, that, that's not language independent. You could be, you could just, you'd understand, not just communicate. Language is tricky, man. Language is tricky. All right, anyway, this one <laughs> is a very straightforward game with some dice, some cards. Now, the cards have titles. Don't matter. In fact, the theme don't Doesn't matter, matter. <laughs> in this game because it's really a purely it's just pretty it, you know and the, and the artwork is nice so honestly it's not a lot of it because every card of its own faction or color or whatever the same thing is the exact same artwork there's actually yeah. not a lot of artwork in this game but the puzzles it presents are very engaging you know this idea of those dice you see there on that little board you don't roll them except for setup you just manipulate them with the cards that you are by that you're, you know, drafting, and uh, you're trying to make sure those dice meet the criteria of the card between them to score victory points. Mm. Of course, there's another card on the other side of that die, which you're hoping to also meet the criteria for. So that's where the puzzle comes in. There's a little bit of area majority in this game as well. So if you want to play a, a game that has some area majority elements. It's not a full-blown area majority only game, but that's a big chunk of it. And that, that feeds into the end game scoring part of the game, certainly not to be uh, forgotten about. So there you go. Sentient, short game, punchy, definitely language independent. All right, I'm back in the normality here. Uh, well, that's probably never true. But my number seven is uh, a Euro game, I guess, maybe economic game, and that is Airlines Europe. And I know this one works because I have definitely played this with people who spoke almost no English okay. before in the past. And in this game, you are getting stocks of different airlines or adding airlines on the board and making them bigger. All you need to do is collect cards, play cards. I don't believe there's any words on the board other than the names of cities, and I, that doesn't matter. Um, no, no, that's okay. It's just there for flavor. It doesn't even... You're, so you're moving things around. And so, I, there you go. I'm back. You, people, people can stop yelling at me about... Dixit, um, or no. concept. Well, were you all about shit about Dixit too? No, no, concept. no. Oh, that was I more about concept. my loss of of language abilities for a moment. Oh. Airlines Europe. That's just rude, y'all. My number seven. No, they were not. It's not right. He has a condition. <laughs> I don't it's have a condition. I'm what? not gonna say what it's called. I just I may have used up all my energy for today in the morning. I was pretty. You were on fire this morning. Well, not literally. <laughs> well, in my mind, you were. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> What's hmm. next? My number seven airlines Europe. What's next? Number six. My number six Ooh. is a classic. Um, largely deemed that way. Chessy. Huh? Chess. No. Although ja checkers. Jatsy. We'll be talking about that later. Huh? Jatsy? Jatsy? Yeah, well you throw the Oh, dice. Yahtzee. No. Don't correct me. <laughs> No. Don't tell me. That is not okay. Parchisi. Parchisi. This one is called Carcassonne. 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 Mm. Carcassonne. I don't know how they say it. Actually. I don't know how they say it either. Anyway, yes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess I should have, as Short list for me, a commenter right has, has stated in the past, if I'm going to include it on my list, maybe I should actually find out how to actually correctly speak it and try and throw up that their own Come in, on! in their but, language um, though, I mean Carcassonne is uh, a tile laying game where you're simply really kind of just putting together a puzzle and as you're putting that puzzle together you're trying to score points and that's really about it there's no language dependency at all in this game other than teaching the rules 
that's it. Uh, and it's it's one of those games that you can put in your particular flavor of Carcassonne, whatever it want to be. My particular favorite one Barbecue. is Amazonas. Uh, but you can fill in any one, and I think all of them... I, again, I can't remember everything, but I think most all of the Carcassonne games are largely language are independent. All, probably. So uh, at the same level, so you can literally just p drop in whatever your favorite Carcassonne game is here. So that's well, my number six. Scrabble they print English Carcassonne. Edition. Well, sure, but they print these one time and then just stick the language, the rule book that they need in there, like the the German sure. copies Pretty identical, sure. you know. So sure. yeah, I saw some cool Carcassonne tiles at the expo. Like big double ones with rivers and cities, and mm. I didn't know what set they went to, so I didn't get them. Carcassonne. <laughs> My number six. It's not an Italian city. Is uh, I, th I do think that's a uh, weird argument because some city names we translate depending on the different True. languages, like Rome, and in Spanish it's Roma, right? Yes. Like we don't say Rome. Rome in right. Spanish. Right. But then people expect. It to be said in the language that is spoken where the city is? That no, well, we say Los Angeles, too. That's true. Los Angeles. That's a mispronunciation. I expect you to say that right. And then there's New Orleans or Nolens. I don't think anyone says that one the same way. Like, every time I meet somebody, hey, <laughs> that's a different... Uh, New Orleans. <laughs> that's how I say it. I don't think anyone says that. I pull out that. the monocle before I say it. <laughs> oh, you're going to be visiting. Hold on. <laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> anyway, my number six is Bachem Park. <laughs> Bachem Park. Wait, that's in a different. That's a German. I can't even that's understand German, how to say it. Baby, you gotta say it like that. Why did it's not called Bear it, Park? Or it's something? called Bear Park, y'all. I don't know why it's not called Bear Park. But anyway, Bear Park. Uh, this is also a tiling game. It's actually good after yours because they're very similar. Yeah, it is. And this is probably why Carcassonne isn't on the list. I had it on the short list. Got it. I yeah. figured one tile lane game or two That's is enough. enough. You know. I gotta say, as a small side note, the, I see the little stands here are shaped like fries. Almost every app or every board the game fries? I play, there's little fry stands here, right? For the people oh, who buy like food. the actual okay. building. They're, they're shaped yeah. like French fries. Almost every app of an amusement park or any kind of park, they're shaped like that. And almost every board game I play, they're shaped like that. And I've never in my life seen one that was. I know. Oh, how are you gonna tell? It's a fry shack if it's not shaped like french fries on the board game. I, well, I know that. That makes sense, right? I just, I want to go. They have I'm, to be. I'm right? sure someone's seen one. I'm sure they exists somewhere, right? Somewhere in a real amusement park somewhere. There's got to be. But you're right. They're not really. It's not like you go to the amusement, amusement park and it's like, oh, they sell fries at that building over there because it looks like french fries. Yeah. You know what would be really weird, though? That they didn't sell French fries at that building. Yeah, you show up and they're like, "Hi, like you walk in and can like, we see your documentation, please? We're just uh, border control." And you're like, "What is this? <laughs> border control? <laughs> I would have to be border." Sorry, I derailed the whole conversation. Back to you. Yes. Uh, the the, uh, the zoo is right next to uh, an airport. What were we talking about? Baron Park. That's yes, it. Yes, there we go. Anyway, that's basically it. it's a towel laying game. It's got a a good amount going on in it. Completely language independent. In fact, the different parks in the game are called, I think, just Bear Park in different languages, right? Or something, but in a different well, language for each. So hmm. it's just silly. Um, Mine's called, called Bear Mania. Bear Mania. That's what, what I would, name my park. Your park? Because you. I would call my mine would be like a scary one with a with a bear. Maniacs. Bear Maulings. That's also. <laughs> yeah, my bears would be half of them would be just completely free to roam. The Bear Mall and it's spelled M A U L. Oh my word! Yes. Welcome to the Bear Mall. <laughs> Hope you get out. French fries and fear. I would call it. <laughs> anyway, that's my number six. All right, my number six is the heaviest game on my list. Mm. Uh, I think there's no English anywhere in this game, and that's Rajas of the Ganges. So this game, which I really like, and it's all about dice and using dice and placing them in different spots. It has a little bit of Carcassonne, where you are using the tiles to build uh, a thing in front of you. You're putting out workers that move a boat down a river, and you'll notice it's symbology everywhere. It's not that complex, though. It shows you the little resources and things you get. And I really like this one. This is one of my... Numbers. Yeah, those numbers kidding. aren't are in English. I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm I was going to say we're like going with numbers. We have a whole different thing going here. I mean, if you're this Roman, you're not going to be able to understand those numbers. True. Romans. 
Where are my numerals at? I'm so glad that like Roman numerals is not a thing at? in games. Can you imagine at? with like big numbers? <laughs> I'm like, oh my so word. Imagine be like, okay, hold on. X, V, V, <laughs> three <Alrighty>. L's. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Anyway, my number six. I've yet to six, play this one, but I wanted to. This is a very solid, amazing game. It's gone under a lot of people's radars, but check it out. Rajas of the Game. I'm actually more interested in this game because of the company that makes it, because I know that they, they produce lighter. Who? Fair. Who, who confirms? Or R&R. &R. Oh, R&R. &R. Oh, uh, I guess they're just the... Well, they co-did right? it together, actually, okay. I think. Well, so, yeah. Cool. Number five. My number five. What happened? Actually, I probably said that the wrong way, didn't I? You, I bet you did. I probably Somebody did. out there right now is writing a strongly puzzle, worded puzzle letter. Puzzle is five if you're counting things, I think. Not number five. Olbin. Who are you looking at? I don't know. This oh, you're the one that's been to Korea, man. Come on, dude. Oh, that was Korean. Il -i -sam -sa. Oh, yeah, it's Olbin. Olbin, I think. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Transamerica. The reason I have Korea on the mind here is because I yeah, use Transamerica. You what don't like the you? game. You can't count all. to five in Korean and then suddenly be like, oh, I'm my pig. Transamerica. No, I used to use. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have Trans Korea. Sorry. They've got Trans America and Trans Europa. Have you seen the version I put in the library that's Trans America and Trans Europa together? Yeah, I've seen it. I just, I've never used it. But no, the reason this is on my list and the reason I've, I've thought about it so much because I use this all the time as a break. For my students that were that I was teaching English to, but I still wanted some type of you know Western world connection, so I was teaching them, helping them learn geography uh, with Transamerica, and there were English letters and words, you know the names of the cities, but that's it. Uh, there's nothing else. It's just getting from your little spot on America to another spot on America, and that's it. Um, and it's it was really simple to teach. Uh, which is another thing because some of the kids I was teaching this to didn't speak English well at all and I was teaching them in English. So if I can get them to understand with the little English that they understood, it's even less language independent than most games. All right. So that's one of the reasons that it made the list. Um, uh, my number five, Transamerica. All right, my number five is a game called Sheep and Thief. This is oh, a card one. drafting game. Good I'm a thief. Game. Good game, good game. And you are... You play, I think, four rounds, you draft a hand of cards, and you're going to be playing those onto a board in front of you, trying mm -hmm. to get your little sheep to uh, be protected from a wolf that's roaming around. Uh, make sure other players don't steal your sheep, and then connect oh, I love your... those little cotton balls. I don't think those come in the game. Yeah, that's the original version of this, the Japanese printing. I couldn't find a solid picture of the new printing, the Pegasus. No. But that, I had the original, I've now got the Pegasus. Both are fine. It's, it's the same thing. Um... I really like it. It's a connection game, largely, but you're also trying to keep these sheep that you are uh, deploying safe from the other players. I'm going to deploy my battalion of sheep. Battle sheep. Halo Battle jump. sheep. Most overused animals in games. Battle sheep. Sheep. Parasheep drop. Parasheep. You good? I'm good. I'm done. That's it. What my number yeah. five. Let's get a little bit simpler to a game that's fantastic, but I believe is out of print, but I still like it a lot, and that is Domain. The oh, best you, game. This is your bang the dice game. You got to stop talking about this old busted thing. Have you played this? Ooh. Good night. No, this came out before the year 2018. <laughs> I don't talk about no old games. <laughs> Domain is an absolutely fantastic game, and the production values look pretty good considering when it came out and considering it was done partially by Mayfair. Oh, snap. <laughs> uh, uh, it's okay. We can be mean to me for now. They're gone, right? Whoa. Oof. Double trouble. Speak mm. ill of the dead company. Anyhow, no, this was actually originally from Cosmos. We can but do that now? The production is okay, fantastic. So. In this game, you play a card. The card will tell you what you can do, or you take a card, and then you pay money for that card. Is there a language on the cards? There's none. It shows money or just symbols, and there's only a few... That was the point of this list. I'm making sure you don't done goof again. Looking out for you. Fair enough. All right. Anyway, domain is fantastic. You can get domain in a lot of used game places. Yeah. And it's not that expensive if you look for it that way. I yeah. highly recommend it. <laughs> <Domain>. <laughs> <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think Sam's selling his for $2. Mm, okay. I will pee. Number four. My number four. My number four is, uh, was used to be, a, well, no, nah, it, it is coming. <laughs> It is coming. You said you wouldn't get sick and you did. <laughs> caught it. I caught the virus. Yeah, baby. You're next, Roy. My number four used to be called Cloud Nine, but my, my, now my it is called said. Celestia. I got to say, a lot of the games you've been saying have been called out by people. That's right. I'm the voice of the people. Move on sure. over. That's right. Anyway, no, Celestia. I'm, I'm good. Get is, back <laughs> Uh, it's a great game. Uh, does not require any communication at all uh, on the cards or in the game uh, uh, proper. I mean, sometimes you're going to ask the leader, hey, do you think you can make it? But they ain't going to tell you the truth because it's all about... <laughs> so there's an obvious lie in a game. Well, Language is debated because what they say doesn't matter. Well, Are you the werewolf? <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing as saying no, yes, because it's all it a lie. doesn't matter. You're right. That's interesting. A game in which you do talk, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Wow. No, seriously. I mean, if you, you can ask people questions, and there is that freedom within the game, but it's not de necessary. The game isn't dependent upon it. So right, right, right. Uh, Celestia is a great game, great push-your-luck game, uh, where it's kind of a corporate pushing your luck. Or you can jump ship and try to score some points and before the, the, the ship falls. My strategy is to jump at the first level. Every single time. No. And hope the game takes 50 that's times. That's why you win so much. You are a push your luck person. There's no way that's your yeah, strategy. No, that's, no, I stay on until the end, baby. Until it crashes. That's my number four, Celestia. Also a great looking game as well. So that's number four. Now, my number four has been mentioned kind of, and it is Azul. But I did pick the original one. Um, ah, yeah. Cult of the Old. <laughs> so now I'm going to be called the Alpha. All right. Oh, this guy always wanted to talk about old games that are three years or older. Uh, boring. Disgusting. It's a little simpler. That's why I picked it. Um, but yeah, Sam already said everything. It's you know tile yeah, laying. It's, and it's actually why Azul was was closer to ten because it is a little more complicated. It's not even two years old yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, really. Uh, anyway, this is a very gorgeously produced game. It's a, it's a fairly straightforward one to play. It does not require you to speak. And it's going to have, it starts to inch a little bit closer towards that interaction with people, you know. We're not quite at party games yet, but there's going to be a little meanness in this, you know. You're going to have to sort of deal with what other people do to you, especially in a two-player game. Ooh, this game's a, two, a mean two-player game. Anyway, my number four, Azul. Tanya, I'm going to turn Azul into a curse word. Like, I'm... Azul, and everyone's like, Vassal, watch your mouth. It's not, it's kind of hard to do, isn't it? To turn a word into a curse word? I mean, I guess that's how curse words came into being, right? But One guy somewhere. I just like, got to get like six going, people to join me, and then you need to look properly affronted when someone else says it. I say Azul, and someone in the back row falls out of their chair. You know, and they get up and they're someone like, someone pulls out a fan. <laughs> My word! Old lady faints. Oh. <laughs> You just get a bunch of people to do that. Pretty soon, the kids are like, oh, I we're not supposed to be using word this word, anymore. so we're gonna. Yep. I think my sister did that to one of her kids where, like, they taught... They taught about something was a bad word? Yeah, like something that was clearly not. And sometimes <laughs> he, he'd be like, he'd say it, and, and they themselves would be like, watch your mouth, but it wasn't anything. <laughs> so if he said it out in the, in the world, it wouldn't matter. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a heck of a tactic, I guess. <laughs> That's brainwashing right there. Kind of. Okay, my number four is another Euro-style game. This is one that Z and I both enjoy a lot. Mm. And this is Automania. This is language yeah, independent, like isn't too. it? What y'all? Well, we like it a lot. You, yeah, like, you it. like it a lot more than I You like it. Like it too. Okay. But if you look at that board, look. No words. You and just pick your car. You, I mean, you pick an action. And even the actions aren't that hard. I, this one's really close to me being able to teach it almost without saying anything. Like, yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> show moving over. Oh, it would be hard, okay? It true. would be hard. Oh, oh, but I could come pretty close to doing it, I think. Yeah, you're right, because there's a lot of symbology, but it's pretty clean and straightforward. Right, and then you just show car moves through here, take the money, you know, take the points. Yeah, I think you could pull it off. Wow, that's interesting. Like a game, how many games could I teach without saying anything? 
Again, if we take very abstract few. strategy games out of the mix, it would be very few. Very few. Yeah. Yes. That's an interesting idea. So my number four, Automania. All right. Number three. My number three is an actually a, a dexterity game called Ice Cool. Wow, oh my word. Ice cream. Are you reading the comments? No. You I are definitely picking over. like every game people are mentioning in the comments. <laughs> What's it like? What's it like? All right, so uh, Ice Sam. Cool is a game where you're, you're taking on the persona of Boys. a penguin that is skipping class in their high school and they're going to get a snack. Who hasn't and been there? They have apparently <laughs> snacks that are hanging from the. The doors. It's the fish. door jams, and uh, I don't That's where I keep my beef jerky. <laughs> it's very similar. Yeah, if there was beef jerky, I'd be like, ah! ah. <laughs> Yo, I'd be like a monkey with banana for beef jerky. Okay. I would be. Yeah? Last night, someone gave me a big bag of beef jerky, and I almost tackled them to get it. Cool. It was so good, too. Who gave you a bag of beef jerky? Was There's that? one person who's playing the hall monitor, however, and they're trying to run into, literally, uh, all of the other little penguins and get them to go back to class. And whoever scores the most points Smack. is the winner. There is absolutely no language dependence whatsoever in this game. None. At all. Uh, well, so and when you really mess up, you can curse in your own language and nobody else is offended. Unless they know what you're saying. Uh, but that's my number three. Ice cool. All right. My number three is, uh, like I said, a simultaneous one in which uh, you are going to be trying to build paths to temples. This is Karuba. And this one is not only good at being language independent, being able to play with a group that truly cannot speak to the other members of that group. It's also great for different ages. I, I've played this with a spread of about 60 years from the youngest to the oldest. And that's pretty cool, and it works, hmm. you know? Where you're just pulling out one tile from your own pool, you say that number on the tile, or you don't have to say, you can show it. Yeah. Everybody else finds that tile, put it in your own grid. Try to make your little Wherever dudes. Wherever you want it to go, yeah. Yeah, walk your little dudes to the temples, gather some gems, make points, game's over when, yeah. I don't know, a number of temples have been connected, figure out what your score is. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It also technically could be played with more people than the number of components that come in the box. Doesn't the box actually say that? It's like 1 to 99 I don't like think that. it does. I know there are some games that do that. Some games do that. This one is, I don't know if there's six boards or five or right. whatever in there. But technically, if you had two copies, you could play ten. The only problem with that is, and the reason I don't necessarily consider this one of those 1 through 99 player games. You know, people call it Augustus. Not, I'm sorry, go ahead. There's not that many permutations. So the ties would be ridiculous after like 15 people. Yeah, people call Augustus the gamer's bingo. This is this is I kind of this is more like gamer's bingo than. But than this one's a connection thing. Yeah, it's not about like boop stamp the card. True. You need to make a path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, Karuba, I really enjoy it myself. A great family game. Mm -hmm. I'm still stuck on this spread thing. That's interesting. Like, what's the biggest spread I could pull off? Maybe 90 years, get a 95-year-old and a 5-year-old in the same game. That's, that's tough. You'd have to find the 95-year-old yeah. for one thing. I find, I find somebody and be like, I would like to play a game. Why would you like to play a game? I'm trying to break some sort of record. <laughs> Sit down and play this game. Bring my 3-year-old to the hey, table. All Earl, right. come in here. Mr. Guinness, Earl Guinness, come in here. Sit down right. right there and watch this. <laughs> all right, my number three is a game I talk about often, and I like it a lot, and I feel sometimes like I'm the only person who promotes this game, but it has a grid, and you don't need to know language, no grid. Adventure Land. Adventure Land. Yeah, you just move these people. You flip a card. I thought he was going to say can't stop, but no. it has a grid. Yeah, but can't stop ain't on my list. Um, and he this game, this. I do like this game. You move to a spot. I mean, you put <coughs> stuff out, and then you move. That's it. Again, this is one I think I could teach without saying much, with the exception of the scoring. The scoring is where this one's a little trickier than the other ones, uh, because if you, depending on which of the three games you play. But if you play the base game, it's not complex at all. I was just thinking to myself, well, you could technically show them the chart of how scoring works, but then I furthered that. I was just thinking that, too. I furthered that point in my head, and I thought, well, technically, then I could teach any, every game. Any game. If I you just, just print like, out enough languages. Look at the rule book. Here you go. Here okay, you go. now read this one. I will wait. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's a, God, that's, that's not teaching that's you the game. That is game. weird. We Purpose. were thinking it's almost the exact same thing. It's you in my brain. That's what it that's is. That's because he gave you that language that's been passed down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. My number three, 
fantastic game from Haba Adventureland. Number two. All right. Two. My numero two mm. is dose. No. Bang, bang what it is dice, is um, I actually thought the first game that actually came to my mind on this was chess. And I wasn't going to include chess. Because it sucks. No. Whoa. I'm just kidding. No. The people who play it suck. No. No, no, no. no. Oh, I'm sorry. The people who study it suck. No. The people who do it and box at the same time. No. The reason it's on my mind is because I was actually playing it against a computer and getting my butt handed to me on the computer plane. Computer uh, chess players suck. No, they're actually really good, um, but it's just I'm not very fun to play against. Like but anyway, AI. my pick for this actually is is one that was brought up earlier, and Only I gave Tom. Roy a look because Roy's seen all of our top tens. Is Onitama. Uh, Onitama is one of the first games that actually came to my mind after I thought of chess. But what makes Onitama special? Uh, what do you mean special? Like, why would you like it so much? What makes this one like better than chess? Because it's more fun than chess. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like the fact of having only, what is it, one, two, three, four, uh, five. Five moves in the entire game. And you're going to be using those five moves uh, conversely between you and your opponent the entire game. And you have to beat the other person with those five moves before they beat you with those five moves. And I really like that dynamic of the game. You don't need to speak anything at all. You can you can literally start playing, and just and they'll pick it up almost intuitively, and that's one of the that's reasons. Another why one you I could do that this. with teacher without speaking. I think. Onitama. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, think it's I'm a great do choice. That for now on, just for fun. <laughs> like, you want to learn a game and just start showing them, and they'll be like, what? <laughs> Okay, you put, I put this here? Is that what I'm supposed to do? And then you go... <laughs> yeah. And just the, like just not, even certainly. Ex, not even let them know I'm going to teach you without speaking. <laughs> so it's silent <laughs> teaching, and for you, also silent learning? Yes. Did you get that? Yeah. No. No <laughs> questions either, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's my number two, Onitama. All right, my number two is a party, basically, game. I wanted to... Um, Get something for a big group in here with very few rules, but kind of a party atmosphere. And that was hard, because most party games you need to talk. But it's Diamant. It's a push your luck, big also, party game. Also on my, on my short list. You know, you... But I just included it in one of my other lists, so... Yeah, yeah. All because of you people. So, yeah, you can play this with, what, six all at ones or something like that? Mm -hmm. Really, as many as you want to, yeah. really. And it's literally, you can go like this or like this. Yeah, you don't even need, the, you need a you pawn, need I guess, talk. but... Yeah. Um, that's basically it. I mean, it's it's fun. It's push your luck. It is going to get a group, if you get into it, kind of that giddy excitement of, ooh, okay, one more, one more. You know, that <laughs> feeling. Yeah. And really, it doesn't matter that everyone necessarily communicate. And I think that feeling, that infectious feeling of tension, really works in any language. And I think, actually, will work in mixed languages together at the same time. So this is a, a pick I'm, I'm very happy with. I think this would really go over well for that. Diamant, my number two pick. That's a good choice. So was only time I'd get him. Um, some people were confused. Z and I said we didn't put abstracts on. Sam did not say that. Yes. I did not. Yeah. My number two, old standby, but it works in every language and Take is pleasant. Right. Wow. Nice call. I'm that surprised you included this one and uh, Air <coughs> Airlines Europe or whatever. Because they both have a very similar feel. Ah, yeah, but they're different. Like, Airlines Europe is an economic game. Ticket to Ride is yeah. that classic one. number one is Ticket to Ride Europe, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ticket to Ride. Now, I thought maybe I should put this on the list because there is a card that says Longest Route. But I figured that's pretty obvious Come what on. that card means. Yeah. This is my short list, too. Like, and the reason I know I can play this is because I play this with areas of the world I don't know what the cities mean, right. and I can still play it. They may not be in English, the names of the cities, and yet I can the still connect them. Mean. No, like, for example, in, in, Nor in uh, the Nordic countries one. Yeah. I don't know. I know, like, four of those cities. Right. The rest I don't know. But I can yeah. still play the game because I can just match this with that, you know? Mm -hmm. And it shows you on the card where they are anyhow. Right. 
Right. So if you were like sitting there going, man, that Transamerica thing Sam said sat pretty good. Garbage! Get Ticket to Ride. Well, I, I included Transamerica instead of Ticket to Ride because of its lower complexity. That is true. But in this case, lower complexity means lower fun. Not necessarily. That's actually a bad policy. Don't listen to what I just said. <laughs> exactly. I. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> Let's move to number one. Fight. <laughs> and finally, number one. <laughs> All right. My number one. I have played. Well, it's. I mean, it's good for me. It's. It's uh, one of my favorite language independent games because. Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> oh my! Not even. Dragon Hall. <laughs> we said this before. Yeah, started. Yeah, we we're talking. talking about. The legacy of Dragon Hall is like my the total one. opposite. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, no thanks. No thanks. Ooh, is ooh, a, a, a wise choice. A game that absolutely needs no. Yeah. The people were predicting Stone Age for this. Oh. Is that uh, language independent? Technically, it was, yeah, yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is, and it was going to be my number ten, but it just missed it because yeah, sure. because uh, Code Name Searchers is easier to play. Right, right. So, uh, but yeah, I was going to put Stone Age on the list, but uh, it wasn't going to be number one because um, just the way it's, you it's more complex. It. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. more complex. But anyway, No Thanks is absolutely <coughs> a very simple game to play. There are a number of cards uh, out on the board, and uh, well, one card, and you have to either take it. Or put one of your little red tiddly winks on there, in, in order, uh, basically saying that you're going to pass. Um, and whoever has the lowest score, uh, based upon the number of card, the the number that's on the cards that you have, at the end is the winner. Red tiddly winks are going to be negative points. You're a brave man trying so to explain this. It's very simple. Why? Anybody out there who doesn't know the game, yeah. heard that explanation, they're like, "How what now?" You know what I mean? Because it's a, it's a it's a counterintuitive idea, which is why the game has been around for so many years. Also, you're a bad rules explainer is what I heard. <laughs> no, no, no. The game is counterintuitive. <laughs> it is. You have to show it almost. You have to show it. That's what I mean. It's the card thing always. Okay, little buddy. Well. My number one is no thanks. Because I was wrong about your Can number you one. Can explain to me again? Let's no. jump to Z. Z, Z is your number Come one on, on man. anyone else's Softball, else? dude. Come on, cat. Is your number one on anyone else's list? No, I don't think it's in anyone else's collection of games. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's probably out of print. I don't think this was much of a... I, I just didn't. Go for it. What is it? Um, it's a game called Wink. Uh, oh, wait, I, I, the, I camera, the camera didn't see the hang on. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Mm, that's right. Uh, in this one, it's, this is about as party game as I could find yep. that involved no speaking at all. You know, mm -hmm. I guess miming, but you still got to say a thing out loud to someone miming something, like gestures. Even You got to read the cards in that. This is a party game in which all you have to do is figure out who's holding... Um, a card in their hand that matches one on the table on which you placed your pawn. You mm -hmm. put a pawn anywhere you want as long as you're not holding it. And then all you gotta do is by the time your turn comes back around be like, cool, that one I put it on, that little blue happy dude, you're holding it. And they go, yep, they show it, discard it, I discard the one from the table or keep it for a point or whatever and pick a new one. That's it. Everyone's yep. doing that. You have to do it without And how do I find out there, they have that card? Well, you're I'll right. give you three guesses but you're only gonna need one. They wink at you without being caught. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, like Tom just did a moment ago. I was caught. No, but Cre Creepers caught good, by my it? heart. Creepers would be a bad name for this game. Creepers. <laughs> the Creepers <laughs> edition of this. That's right. Mm, unwanted winking. Yes. I don't know about that. Anyway, this um, leads to a lot of laughter. A lot of, again, that sort of holding your breath tension of you're looking around, not just looking for who is, has it, but also trying to catch people. Be like, What's the bigger game that does a similar thing? It's like a masquerade, I think. There's a fiduity game or something where there's multiple symbols going around where one person's trying to wink and another person's trying to like touch their nose. Oh, I don't know that and one. And there's multiple people trying to... You have the same symbol as somebody else, so you can do a false symbol, but... And then there's also the spoons variants that do that. Sure. Where you can have sure. like a, a, a symbol and the other person, you're trying to like communicate with each other and everyone else is trying to figure out what your form of communication is. 
Right, right, right. There's a, also a card game, just a traditional card game that kind of does that yeah, thing. Yeah, spoons. I call it squares, I think, but whatever that is. That's what you call me usually, but... <laughs> anyway, Wink is my number one pick. Very fun. All right. What's your one, man? My number one... Okay, so... I picked these in order of my my, my least favorite to favorite. Okay. Uh, that's how I did it. So this is my favorite. Gloomhaven. The highest one. <laughs> Actually, there's not like I said, there's not a single game in my top ten, but this one's very close to my top ten. I play this a lot. I play this with people who do not speak a lick of English. I've taught it to them without knowing anything. But it's a dexterity game. Flick them up. No, oh, flick them oh, up. I thought about pitch, pitch, pitch car. Pitch yeah. car works everywhere. Language independent. Flick the car. Don't go off the track. That's the rules. Well, actually, there's a bit more, but I can... That's largely it. That's yeah, basically the rules. So I, I didn't want to fill the whole list with dexterity games, obviously, mm -hmm. because they work. But this one I like so very much. And there is a... Where's my loop? Where's my loop, Ferdy? It's, it's impossible. You will not be able to get a loop in that game. No, no, no. I kickstarted the loop. It's supposed to be arrived. I'm supposed to get no, for I'm it. No, hey, I don't think... It's going to work. No, I don't think... It's, it's going to work. work. I've ordered four loops. Where are my loops and my extra cars? Yo, I forgot about that till right now. I'm like, where's the stuff? I know. I kind of like. Did you just suddenly like? That was weird, right? Well, he definitely got his Fruit Loops. Apparently. <laughs> What's going on, man? Anyhow, I, I love Pitch Car. This is a great, fantastic, fun game, and it works. And I can't wait. Uh, the Championship of the World is happening in a month from today. The Championship of, of the, the World. world. Yeah. Not I thing. have. Not Legal permission from Eagle and Griffin Games. Let the audience know where the championship of the world for pitch car is happening. In the international city of Orlando. And at On which event? On International Drive. Right off International Drive. So how can we go wrong? At the Dice Tower International World Con. <laughs> That's the new name. Oh, my God. Grandia. It just rolls off the All tongue. right. So what... What games should we not have put on the list, or we should have? Asking the one that people have been going back and forth has been the mind. The mind actually works for this list. Yeah, that was. It just didn't make my top list, ten. That's for sure. Sure, I guess. Yeah, that's a, that's a fine pick. Yeah, definitely. What else, you guys? It's time for your your comments. What should we? Hopefully, this is a list that. I know it's kind of a little bit of an esoteric list, but it's one that I hope will be helpful to people again. We get in that asked situation. this all the time. Mm -hmm. People often do find themselves in that situation where you want to play a game, but not everyone is going to be able to talk to each other. I mean, true. Yeah, it was funny though. Going through my list, I was like, okay, Seventh Continent. Oh, there's tons of there's tons of reading in that. So Gloomhaven. Much, there's yeah. lots of reading. Cosmic Encounter. There's like tons of text on these in these games. Yep. Uh, Reef. Sure. Yeah. Reef is a good game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much anything Emerson does doesn't have text usually. Bruh, well, I don't know. Is there no. text in Spectre Op? Yeah. yeah. Well, like Narashima Hex. The reason I wouldn't put Narashima Hex is even though it's iconography, you have to read those reference cards and they're different for every single. Sure. They all have special abilities and... And you could print that out in whatever language you needed to. Be, sure, but then but you can use that with a lot of games. Independent, technically, yeah. What about, like, we didn't put any... Roll and rights on our list, did we? Mm -mm. Most of them are language independent. Yes, that's true. Um, almost all roll and rights are language independent, unless it's like a Scrabble type roll and write. Right. Yeah, I guess it didn't make my top ten. Word? Are there any word games that are language independent? Well, technically, any game is. The problem is, like, you could say Scrabble's language independent, but the problem it's is, not. is the mix of letters is specifically for that yeah. language. Oh, of course, yeah, it's not. Uh, Seven Wonders. I thought about that. I also thought about Fairy Tale. Um, but I couldn't remember how much text is on each of the different cards. Fairy Tale has no text. Fairy Tale has dropped for me just because there's so many better drafting games that have come out. Right. Um, Seven Wonders is actually. That's pretty good, it actually. Is, but again, you need that reference for that much iconography. Yeah, you, okay. Yeah, if you're not going to put the, what was the first one you said about the reference? New York Shima Hex. If New York Shima Hex doesn't right. make it, Seven Wonders doesn't make it. All right. Wow, there's a ton of uh, junk art. Well, yeah, lots of any sure. dexterity game sure, yeah, is yeah, yeah. going to make the possible list. Uh, Colt Express. There uh, must be language on those cards. No, there's not. You flip it over and it's like a punch or a shoot or something. Okay. That works. King Domino. Sure. 
I thought about it. It's on my uh, short list. Ingenious is actually a good one, although the sequel to Ingenious, Axio, I think is better than Ingenious. Really? Yeah, yeah. I gotta play that. Uh... Deception Murder in Hong Kong? Nope. <laughs> Why? You have to ha you have to talk. You have to. Oh, sure. You have uh, to talk. They also, but the word, the cards have the word, and the picture is not always good enough. Hundred percent doesn't um, work. Are no. you saying you wouldn't play it with just a picture? No, no way. Oh, okay. I think you could. It's, I, it's the I honestly think the, you can. The, the reason I didn't include it is because it it requires talking. You must communicate. Well, the reason I didn't put it in there is because I think the pictures are actually not enough. Yeah. Like, it might be a picture of a syringe and it says drugs. Those are not the same thing to someone who can't read the word drugs. I know you're thinking to yourself, yeah, drugs, they're it. No, because if I showed that to my mother, she'd think insulin injection insulin, or something. Right. You know what I mean? But that Not also the same could, thing. That also could be a murder weapon, though. You give somebody yeah, but it's too not much the insulin, same you one, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, sure, that's sure. a problem. But, I mean, insulin is a drug. Okay. But Photosynthesis. it could also be something else. True. Photosynthesis works. Also I don't remember what well. the, if the board has any language no, it on it. Nah, it, it has just icons. Trees. That's it. That works. Uh, Takinoko. That's just yeah, pictures <laughs> of the tiles that the, the, the yeah. penguin, the penguin, the panda needs to eat bamboo. Yeah. He needs no, to there is a language reference on your board for the different symbols on the action dot. Yes, yes, you're correct. Boom. <laughs> Next. <laughs> you're wrong. Sushi go? Sure. Technically. Twilight Imperium. Um, no. Um, Lost Cities? Yes, obviously. Forbidden Island? <laughs> no, there's action cards with text on them. Yes. Yes, That's got it. That's why Pandemic didn't make it. Camel Up. Camel Up is actually, when someone said that one, I thought that might have made my list had I thought of it. Camel Up has no, you're just bidding on them, right? That, that, Camel Up's actually a really good one. I played that because with my you can play that actually. with almost no, you can play it with almost no communication verbally. Just take a card, you know, there's that cheering, but you don't, you're right. what are you going to do now? I'm going to take a die. You know, you just take you're the right, die. You're right, you're right, you're right. That's a good one. That is a solid pick. Yeah. Right. Alrighty. Really good stuff. That's a good one. Alrighty. Well, if you're watching this <laughs> later on, of course, put your picks in the description below and in the comments below. Um, that's pretty much it. We'll be yeah. back tomorrow. A live play of Dwellings of Elder Vale. So that's at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yes. And then next week is Origins. It's really spinning around pretty fast. Yeah, I'll yeah, be there at Origins myself with Mr. Roy Kennedy. So if you Roy. see me there or Roy... Come on up and uh, say hi. Uh, just, you know, say that you watch the videos and I'll say thank you because you're awesome. Also, we have, uh, it's, we're going to take a couple weeks off from doing top tens. We'll come back once we're together again. Uh, this coming Monday, we'll be doing an Origins preview where we're going through the site book and just telling you what we think of this stuff there. All right, cool. Um, but if you have an idea for a future top ten, let us know in the comments. We don't do all of them. We won't do all of them, but you never know. Something interesting, something that we can misinterpret and have people yell at us about. Ooh, <laughs> that's fun. All right, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks, everybody. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Take care. Mm -hmm.